camp counselors of reddit what is the most nsw thing you've seen happen at camp i worked at an eight week sleep away camp in the northeast and was working in a bunk of seven and eight year olds as the summer went along we lost a few counselors due to the fact our campers were the devil's spawn and only six or seven years old so us remaining counselors were spread thin and one day in the span of 10 minutes when we didn't have a counselor in the bunk I'm walking back and all the kids are running out of the bunk screaming about how one of the campers, M6, put his dong in another kid's mouth, M7. This is an all boys camp too, and when the camper was later asked why he let the other kid put the his dong in his mouth the kid's response was because they dared me to after long lashings from the director and owners and what I assume was some long talks with the kids. Parents it was all swept under the rug and forgotten. TL. DR. A camper put his dong in another male camper's mouth. My favorite item was a 13 year old boy at camp out. Both his hands were in his sleeping bag and he was clearly masturbating. His counselor called a hand check where you have to display both hands in the air. He only raised on hand. The counselor asked for both hands and he replied give me 4 minutes. I used to work at a cub scout summer camp and one summer we had a staff member named Mark. Mark was your general super douche boy scout, not saying all scouts are douches but there are certainly some gigantic ones, and completely overconfident in himself. So one day Mark was telling all of us, the staff, about how his dong is 10 inches soft and not even jokingly he was being very serious. So clearly we all knew he was bullshitting so that night a few of the other staff spray painted a giant dong on the side of his tent along with the quote 10 inches soft. The best part was the paint didn't show up unless it was dark and then it glowed. So whenever you walked up to the tent site at night you could see a giant glowing dong with 10 inches soft quoted underneath. The best part was none of the management knew until the next summer when we were setting up tents for the summer. And when the ranger saw it he got so angry and offended and started talking about how all kids nowadays are satan. I work in a building that hosts a camp for people with autism and other mental handicaps. A guy with something was really attached to his counselor, a girl. He really liked her and asked her out almost every hour of the week. She finally said no I have a boyfriend or something along those lines. He got really mad and stripped down, and freaked out. He peed and pooped all over the floor. When other counselors were trying to calm him down he ran over to a fire extinguisher box and smashed his head into the glass. He had big chunks of glass in his face and forehead, bleeding everywhere. We were told as building managers to stay clear of the floor he was on. They would clean it all up. It was odd. Another story. When he left the building we also found a sort of poop shrine he would poop in the closet and then mold underwear to it. He must have used a whole can of Fabrias on the thing a day because we never knew about it. Couldn't smell anything. Handicaps. They do indeed come in handy. I was a counselor for a teen group. 13 16 year old boys and girls. We took the group of about 25 on a camping trip to Oklahoma. Since most of the kids came from pretty well to do families and the YMCA where we worked had plenty of money we were staying in pretty swanky cabins. One large living room downstairs and two large, loft style rooms upstairs. Of course we separated the girls on one side, boys to the other and counselors in between. One of the female counselors noticed some dust on the floor of the shower one night and looked up to see a hole in the ceiling. The boys had taken the coat hooks out of the wall and used that to drill holes down into the shower so they could watch the girls. They had even gone so far as to work out shifts and an elaborate signal system when counselors were nearby. They were able to keep it up for two nights before anyone noticed. We had to notify all of the parents. Very awkward conversations hey Suwalu about 20 teenage boys may have seen your daughter naked. As a new camp counselor you should do everything you possibly can to ensure that you get a group of older kids. Ages 8-12 preferably. Any younger and you're going to have some interesting experiences. There was one kid I remember named Sam when I had bathroom duty at the swimming pool. Sam was 5 years old and absolutely enamored with his wiener. In fact, Sam couldn't seem to use the bathroom without showing everyone else his miniature little friend. Usually, when all of the campers were changing for the pool Sam would make it a point to run around and show off his lil buddy. Every time he changed for the pool the bathroom erupted in shouts and screams of Sam get away from me. Now, being an adult male camp counselor dealing with this scenario is a very difficult situation. 
Any wrong move could be perceived as inappropriate and additionally, no one likes dealing with naked people. Have you ever been in a fight with a naked person? Getting into an authority war with a nude 5 year old that isn't your own kid is much much worse. The desire to not touch them is increased tenfold. Unless, of course, you have some psychological issues. I yelled inside the bathroom, Sam put your trunks on any number of times but his hearing was as selective as my old runaway Dalmatians. Sam, you're going to be in timeout from swimming if you don't change and get out here now. Nothing. Sam, don't make me come in there. That time he seemed to hear me, and this kid, I kid you not, turns to me and says, you can't do that, and for the most part, he's right. I can't do that and what's more is that I didn't want to do that anyway. All I have to threaten him with is time out and if I did go in there, there wouldn't be much that I could do except for threaten him with time out in closer proximity. Luckily for me, all the kids finished changing despite being harassed by Sam and his miniature companion and Sam. Poor poor Sam was left with no one to show his wiener to so he changed and went swimming after a very very long time out. TL. DR. Don't get stuck with the young kids as a new camp counselor. In my experience the older kids are shittier. Though at the time it didn't help that I was only like 4 or 5 years older than them. One year I was working a regular camp and had a lead counselor run over to another counselor and I to say look in the first stall of the boys bathroom. But we left our kids with our age group's female counselors and ran. By the time we made it a crowd of counselors had formed around the toilet. Contained inside was by far the mightiest, largest turd I have ever seen in my life. Easily a diameter of 3 inches and long enough to be far down into the toilet while also free willying out of the surface of the water. No campers were told about this. A few days later a camper asked me if we were running to the bathroom the other day because of a giant piece of poop and claimed to be the conjurer of it. I was mortified. I was a sit at a boy scout camp and one day another guy and I go look in the staff showers and see someone has taken a mighty crap. It must have been at least 3-4 because this pile is massive, about a foot in diameter. And while we were showering nearby, we kept hearing other counselors come by, look at the crap and start screaming. Someone forgot to waffle stomp. There was this Asian kid named Kevin who went to the bathroom to take a crap, but there was pee on the toilet seat so he started to cry and then took a crap on the floor because he really had to go. Till Kevin was Asian. A kid pretended to be possessed by Hitler and then attacked me because I'm Jewish. Also while he was possessed by Hitler he yelled, WHO killed me to which somebody in the crowded cabin responded, you killed yourself Dustin. I was working as a counselor at an overnight camp and I saw two boys, about 10 years old, fighting and then walk inside a cabin to settle their argument. I followed them in just in time to see them start fighting. It ended with the one kid pulling off three stroke four of the other kid's earlobe, which I had to scoop up and put in a plastic bag with some ice before driving him to the hospital. They were fighting about who was a better musician, Eminem or Bob Molly. Ex counselor here. Our camp has a thing where one night all the people who had been there for three years go out and do crazy crap in the fields by the camp. Needless to say I saw a lot of breasts, but other than that and smoking herb nothing really big happened. Apparently in years before some of the abandoned cabins were used during that night for Audi Frick parties with lots of alcohol involved. This was back in like the 1990s where I guess the upper staff were a lot more lenient. I worked at the camp in 2010 so I guess I missed the really interesting stuff. It was interesting to bring up the topic to my boss who worked at the camp as a counselor at that time and see him get all red faced and not know what I was talking about. TL. DR. A wild night once a year used to a crazy frick party but not we just flash each other and smoke. So I guess I missed the really interesting stuff. The story of my life. I've worked at so many places where they told stories about the good ole days of booze filled parties with people sneaking off. By the time I worked there the parties didn't even have booze because of the liability of someone driving drunk. We had a 9 year old camper who snuck out of her tent in the night and headed into another tent where she straddled another camper, who was sleeping. She apparently stared at the sleeping camper until her heavy breathing woke the sleeping one up. The startled camper screamed and woke her tent mates. All of whom witnessed that the creepy camper leaned down to her victim, 
nose to nose, and said that she was going to murder the victim and write the victim's obituary with her own blood. I have no idea how serious creepy camper was, because the tent mitts all restrained her pretty much immediately. I can't imagine how the phone calls between the camp director and first the creepy camper's parents, then CPS, went. Well, I'm a camp counselor right now. Actually up at camp while I am writing this, and after 3 years working here I have seen some things I never had thought I would see. Usually the offenders seem to be the youngins. Put 7 grade 2 4 boys in a cabin together and something is bound to happen eventually. The first of 2 tales which I will tell occurred in a cabin of grade 3 boys during the time when they are supposed to fall asleep for the night. I was on what is called night watch and went around checking the cabins to make sure that everyone is relaxed and quiet and sleeping. Usually this is a pretty lax job so imagine my surprise when I walk in and see these kids having what they called a, a, a naked disco complete with lights music and of course, dancing. I'm sure you can imagine that we shut that down pretty quick. The second thing also happened while I was on night watch and I went into the cabin of the same age group, grade 3 boys, and the cabin was pretty rowdy. You could hear that something was going on from a few cabins over and so my night watch partner and I go and knock on the door no answer we knock again and again no answer so we open the door and see that they were having a sort of jousting tournament they had a line separating the cabin which i guess the two people would line up on either side of and i don't even know how it was supposed to work but it was a very sophisticated little setup they had going on they had a tournament bracket set up and everything so again we shut the down fast. I know you came here probably expecting steamy frick stories about how frisky counselors campers get with each other but that just doesn't happen where I work and I hope you enjoyed the adventures of naked third graders instead. I was 18 and training to be a camp counselor. I would do day to day work around the camp to help everyone out and one day I went to the laundry room to drop off a load of dirty sleeping bags where there were 3 girls from my group around 14 years old, going to town on each other, a full on lesbian three way, nope the frick out of the laundry room. Didn't witness but, I had two lids, just finished grade 9, sneak off into the forest late at night, and the girl gave the boy a BJ, the girl confessed to another girl, who told me, when she was approached she denied it, but the boy fully admitted to it. Lit stands for leader in training, it's when a camper isn't old enough to be a counselor but wants to learn how to become one. The camp was in Canada. No, I won't say which one because I'm still really close with many staff there and think of the director as a great friend. Top guessing camps at risk of damaging their reputations. If you want to guess your camp you're welcome to inbox me. Holy frisky teens. Batman. Apparently there's a lot of camps this has happened at. <laughs> of course he did. I was a counselor at a boys camp. One day, a counselor walked into his cabin to see most of the campers, all about 13 years old, jacking it with lacrosse gloves and cuming on other campers pillows. Yep. This story take place at an academic camp help on university grounds and has two parts. Part 1 was fairly mundane, as NSW camp stories go. There we were, walking by the dorms after lights out to make sure no one was trying to sneak out, when we spy flashing light in the window of the attic of boys dorm. We found our way up there and discovered that one of the campers had both, a, brought a portable strobe light with him to camp and, b, felt it was a good idea to deploy said strobe while getting it on with a fellow camper. It was, really jarring. We separated them and made plans to call their parents in the morning. The second part of the story is more unique, I hope. The guy with the strobe immediately told his various dorm mates why he had been busted, and by dawn everyone in both dorms had heard of his physical exploits. This upset his young paramour, apparently. She broke into a storage room looking for a weapon and found a large fork used for turning sausages on the barbecue, which he took along with a pair of oven mitts. Giant pointy tines was apparently not good enough for her, so she borrowed all of the other girls curling irons, clipped them to the fork, heated it up, and stabbed him in the stomach with it. I was actually at work as a camp counselor so I hope this doesn't get buried. It was my senior year of high school and a group of upperclassmen always go with the 5th graders to 5th grade camp, most kids first nights away from home. I was part of this group and it was my second year doing this. On the bus ride to the camp, 
I noticed one of the kids was sitting by himself and wasn't talking to anyone. He was a student who had recently moved to the states from China and wasn't very good at speaking English yet so I assumed he was just being shy because of that and sitting alone. I started to talk with him as best I could and asked if he was excited for camp. Blah blah blah. Eventually he started getting red in the face and wrapped his arm around his stomach. I assumed he was getting car sick from the bus so I grabbed the trash bucket by the bus driver and in the kid started screaming bucket. Bucket so I quickly handed him the bucket. He proceeded to take the bucket and put it on the seat next to him, which I assume he's planning to throw up into. He then stands up onto the seat and before I even comprehend what was happening he pulls down his pants mooning the entire bus of 5th grade boys and girls as well as other counselors, and proceeded to sit on the bucket and crap in it, right there on the bus with everyone watching, as the only teacher on the bus and I screamed his name, he stopped mid crap and put his pants on, he finished pooping in his pants and then we had to stop the bus at a mcdonald's so that we could throw away his underwear and he could wipe and clean himself up, it was disgusting, tl, dr, 5th grader crap in a bucket on the bus ride to camp. First year working camp around 2004. Had a junior leader making his dong into a helicopter around the youngest campers outside of the showers yelling shake 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 your dong. Two years later I was co-leader of the leaders in training. We had some new counselors bunking in the same building. Found one winner watching pee. He later admitted it was chili pee. On his zoom. Had around 10 counselors bring alcohol on campgrounds while kids were sleeping. One ended up puking all night in a bucket in the middle of his cabin. Others were laid out all over camp. Almost forgot this one. A 17 year old girl in the junior leaders program stuck a fork into a socket to show others that it was safe. She was wrong. There were plenty of NSW camp moments all around but figured I'd share some of the top moments. Zoom. Freaking pervert. In the camp I used to work at, we'd always used to get a couple of troubled kids. It was an overnight camp, so the female campers had cabins designated rooms on the first floor, and the male campers on the second floor. One night, I went to check on my campers before their set bedtime to make sure everything was alright. I heard yelling from the room above us, although I couldn't quite fathom what was happening. I had just assumed that it was just another typical camper counselor argument because a camper refuses to go to sleep, yet, yeah. turns out one of the campers had turned one of those wire hangers into some sort of brass knuckles rings and started threatening his counselors with it, because he was lectured for being disruptive. Camp counselor for a bunch of 12 year olds a couple years back, and Tyson, the frisky little frick, jerked off every night. We all stayed in big teepees and I'd always hear that kid wank away every night. Just the subtle sound of movement and then it would gradually die after a few minutes. I don't know if he brought a roll of toilet paper for his frequent fap tickets, if he used his sleeping bag as little Tyson Cemetery, or if Tyson was shooting blanks, but I could not sleep to the sound of that kid beating away every night. I was an overseas counselor England working at a Jewish camp up in the hills outside Montreal. One day, after the campers shower time, they returned to the bunk to dry off. Always a time in which I, and the other staff would avoid purely due the weirdness that would ensue. It was usually chaos. I'm talking underpanned had wrestling coupled with naked five frog splashes. Anyway, one day during the final session of a three month summer, the post shower bunk seemed a bit quiet I walk in to see all but three of the twelve campers stood in a line behind two other campers. Not too unusual, they always played dumb games. This one was perhaps a little different, though, they were effectively playing, and they're often known by the staff as the deep throat game. Each kid would take a turn deep throating one older child. Frick knows what the winner got, I dread to think. Needless to say, head staff were told, and parents informed. TL. DR. Kids suck at getting changed after showers. I have been waiting my whole life for this post, so at the beginning of summer camp, many children are shy, anxious, nervous etc. Other just flat out don't want to be there. One of those people happens to be the phantom shitter. So first week of camp, one of the counselors that I work with was doing a bathroom check, just for overall cleanliness of the site. They found that someone was poop painting on the bathroom stalls. Disgusting but not unheard of. Later that week, it happens again. Only this time there is a clear message. 
Painted in bold crap on the bathroom wall was I want Fredham. The phantom shitter doesn't know how to spell but you get the idea. The situation develops further the following week. Field trip. Rather large playground that has a tall slide structure. When I say tall this thing is bigger than a house. At the top of it there is an area where people wait in line to go on these giant slides. As one counselor goes up to watch his children go down said slides. He finds a glorious turd at the top of the slide. Now the phantom shitter would not have gotten away with taking a crap at the top of the slide. Way too much traffic up there. My theory, they took the crap elsewhere in the park and then walked their crap up to the top to be found. Since then there has been more cave paintings on the bathroom walls but no further turds. We'll post updates if anyone gives a frick. This story needs to be heard I don't care how buried IT gets. Comma Fredham. When you're limited in art materials, sometimes you gotta limit your art. Not a counselor, but as a camper. I went to a camp when I was 12 or 13. Don't remember exactly, just that it was the late 80s. It was the first time I ever went to any kind of camp. Rather one where you were away from home for a month. I was a city kid. To us sleepaway camps were just a movie thing. So one day we are playing this weird game which is like volleyball but you throw the ball over the net and the other team has to catch the ball. It was strange but simple enough. Well one of the counselors watching us was this guy Ed. I didn't know Ed, as he wasn't one of my bunk counselors. But word around the camp was he was a really mean butthole. Whatever. So something happens during the game and Ed decides he's gonna step in and call one of the players on my team out. Well I start arguing it. Next thing I know this guy cracks me in the side of the head, then throws me into a chain link fence and starts screaming over top of me. Now this dude had to have at least 5 years and 70 pounds on me. I was in total shock. When he stopped screaming I stood up and every camper is standing their mouth wide open in shock. I just looked in his face and said my father is gonna kill you mother his rage, strength, and intimidation just drained right from his face. I turned and started walking back to my bunk with about 50 campers behind me. I told my bunk counselors who took it very serious. The head of the camp wanted to see me. So as one counselor is walking me there suddenly like 4 other counselors come out of nowhere and surround us. Apparently they were friends of Ed and told me I better not say anything that's gonna get him in trouble. I was in shock. I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up in a city with actually scary people but I just said look. In telling them exactly what happened. If you have a problem with it or do anything to me. When my dad gets done with Ed he can come see you too. I was really getting fed up with this bulls. Like I said, I was only like 12 or 13 years old. The head of the camp said he talked to my father and after a very colorful conversation he had told him Ed had been fired and already sent home so there was no reason for him to come to the camp if I wanted to stay. I did. That night I had at least 15 campers I had never met come up to me and thank me for getting rid of the butthole. I was a camp hero overnight. Still, that summer was my last time in camp. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.